Hare Krishna. Okay, so three days to go. Jagannath, 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 Juggy, call you Juggy, <laughs> Juggy, Juggy. <laughs> That's the English slang for Jagannath is Juggy. Juggernaut, juggernaut, Ooh. big eyes, Ooh. he sees everything, Ooh. yeah, when, he, when, he, when you see those eyes, you see everything. <laughs> okay, so... Okay. See. Hare Krishna. Phone problems. Got it. <laughs> He's a phony. Sri <laughs> Krishna Jai. Tanya Prabhu Nitya Nanda Sri Advaita Karadadar Siva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Dhyaya Sri Advaita Nitya Nanda Gore. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Babu Nitya Nanda Sri Advaita Garadandar Siva Sari Gore Bhakti Vrindhana Hey, Tanya. Nityananda. Get it. Thor. Nihaya Sri Krishna. Chai. Tanya. Babu Nitya. Nandha. Sri Advaita. Gadadadar Siva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vrindha Dhar Jai Tanya Babu Nitya Nitya Nanda Arte Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Boom. 
Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Go Ranga Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Jaya Prabhu Pan, Jaya Prabhu Pan, Jaya Prabhu Pan, Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pan. Jaya Prabhu Pad, Jaya Prabhu Pad, Jaya Prabhu Pad, Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad, Jaya Jaya Gornatai, Jaya Jaya Gornatai, Jaya Jaya Gornatai, Gornatai, Gornatai. Hari <laughs> Sankirtan ki jai vancha kalpa tarubhya kripa sindhu veva cha patita anam bhavane vyo vaishna vebhyo namaho namaha Okay, so today is the divine and most holy, auspicious, glorious, super glorious, maha super glorious, super califragilisticexpialidocious day of the disappearance of Sri Madhavendra Puri. 
Madhavendra Puri is one of the most advanced personalities ever to appear on this earth. We'll get a little insight of his glories. <laughs> Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Okay, so Madhavendri Puri recited this verse again and again at the end of his material existence. That thus uttering this verse, he attained the ultimate goal of life. So here's the verse: Aidina dayadranata he maturanata kadavalo yase. Ridayam tar aloka kantaram daite brahmyate kim karomi aham. O my Lord, O most merciful Master, O Master of Matura, when shall I see you again? Because of my not seeing you, my agitated heart has become unsteady. O most beloved one, what should I do now? This verse is actually recited by. Srimati Radharani. Hmm. So, uh, this is the ecstasy of Sri Madhavendra Puri. Who is Madhavendra Puri? He appeared in our Sampradaya just after the appearance of Lakshmi Pati Tirtha. Madhavendra Puri is the Param Guru or Supreme Spiritual Master of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His spiritual master is Ishwara Puri, a d disciple of Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri was instrumental in bringing in Madhurya Ras into the Sampradaya. Before then, it wasn't introduced. In other words, Radharani's bhakti became prominent, and that is why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this Sampradaya because of Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri in the spiritual world is a kalpa priksha tree. <laughs> There's not too many people who have that identity, but here is one personality. And uh, I'll narrate one story, which is actually part of this particular chapter of the life of Madhavendra Puri to give you a little indication of just how glorious this personality is. <laughs> um, Madhavendra Puri lived in Vrindavan as a young man, and he had taken shelter of Vrindavan. One day he was fasting completely. And at one point in the later part of the day, one little boy, about this guy, size, yeah, probably the same size, he was carrying a pot of milk, and he said, Hey, Babaji, this is Vrindavan. Nobody fasts here. Here, take some Vrind some dud. Have some dud. You know, you know what dud is? Milk. <laughs> Dahi is yogurt, and dud is milk. <laughs> Have some milk. So Madhavendra was charmed by this beautiful boy, took the milk, and then he said, how did you know I was fasting? The boy said, oh, the ladies who come to draw water from the well, they saw you and they could understood, and they, they told me, so I came to bring you some milk here. So he was enchanted, he drank the milk, and the boy said, actually, then it's time for me to milk the cows, I have to leave, so he left. Mother Bindapuri later on took rest, and in the dream, that same boy appeared to him, but in a different way. He said, I'm buried here in this area of Vrindavan. I've been here for many, many hundreds of years. 
Actually, because my Pujari, he was being chased by the Muslims. In order to protect me, he buried me in the ground. But I'm very cold, and I'm dirty. And in the summertime, I become very hot. So, please rescue me. And I can see, I've been waiting for you to come because you are the fit person to offer me worship. So Madhavendra Puri took signs, and then he understood where the area was by the indication of the dream. And so he called some men. They came with shovels and various types of digging instruments, and they started to dig, and they found this big, huge deity of Krishna, beautiful. But he was all wet, covered with dirt. So they took him and made a little throne on the top of a little mountain and installed him there. And then Madhavendra Puri, every day, actually, the first day, he just washed him and washed him and cleaned him so nicely. Got all the dirt off and all his beautiful f transcendental features were being seen by everyone. And then he polished the deity to make him shiny. And then people came and saw, oh, look at this. Krishna has appeared in such a wonderful way by the grace of this great sadhu. So they all came and they start bringing offerings of boga and various kites of vegetables, fruits and, and chapati flour and so many nice things, rice, dal, everything. And every day people were bringing, so he was cooking everything and offering it to Gopal. The deity's name was Gopal. He said, I mean, my name is Gopal in the dream, he told him. <laughs> and so... Yeah, this went on for a whole month, and the, the news spread far and wide. Oh, this Krishna has appeared in such a wonderful way, and he's being worshipped. Let's go see him. Let's bring some nice foodstuffs. Because it says, when you go to see the deity, you should always bring a gift. That is the etiquette. If you live in the temple, that's your, your presence is the gift. But if you're coming from outside, every time you visit the temple... You should bring something for the deity. That is the etiquette. A little flower or maybe, a, you know, 1,000 rupees or 1,000 euros or something. No, not so much. You know, 999, not so much. Anyway, bring something. And that's, so people were bringing all kinds of stuff and every day there was a festival. So many nice boga was being cooked and distributed to and then the news spread even farther to the other villages and people were coming. This went on for a long time, so months. And, you know, and the worship was going on and then Madhavendra Puri found the best Brahmins in the area and had him do the puja and they were worshiping Gopal so nicely every day, regular offerings. And this went on for many, many months. Finally, one night, again, he had a dream. And Krishna appeared to him again in a dream, just to see how, how, how glorious this person is. And said to him, you know, it's summertime and I'm really hot. So bring me some sandalwood pulp to, to rub on my body and make me cool. Because Krishna is a cool guy, right? <laughs> he wants to be cool. <laughs> so... And Madhavendra Puri thought, oh, sandalwood, but that's so far away. The closest place is near Jagannath Puri, and here we are in Vrindavan. That's a long way. But then he thought, Gopal wants it, so I must go. So he left and left all the Brahmins in charge of the worship, instructed him how to take care of Gopal, and he left. And, you know, there's no Rajdhani Express or the local bus. You know, you have to walk or you take bullock cart a long way. So he was going in that area. Finally, he came across one area, which is an area of Arissa. And uh, there was one temple called uh, Jagana, uh, Gopinath Temple, Chinray Muna. So he stopped there to rest. And uh, he saw there was a beautiful deity of Gopinath, and he was being worshipped very nicely. So Madhavendra Puri said to the Pujaris, What do you offer for boga to the deities? He said, oh, this is very special. We have a special cure, sweet rice, that is more nectar than the 
the ambrosio drunk by the demigods. So sweet and so unique. So this is what we offer every evening to him. And it was time for the offering. So the offering was being brought. And then Madhavendra Puri was thinking, boy, I would really like to taste that so I can get an idea how to make it for my deity, Gopal. Well, then he thought, uh-oh, this is not good. I'm thinking of tasting it before the deity has taken it. So he felt very bad. He was just thinking for the benefit of the deity, but then he thought, this is not right. So he left the temple very quietly and went into the village, sat down and started to chant. Soon the offering was over, and the pujari came, collected the pots of sweet rice, and put the deity to rest and went to sleep that night. So just after he went to sleep, the deity appeared to him in a dream, Gopinath, and said, Mr. Pujari, you know, that devotee who came, he's a great devotee, and he would like to taste this sweet rice. So I hid one pot. You didn't see it. I, I hid it behind my dhoti. So come and get it and bring it to Madhavendra Puri. He's in the village. So Pujari woke up. Wow, the deity is talking to me. <laughs> telling me what to do. So he got up, took his bath, went into the deity room, and there he found, hidden behind the deity's dhoti, there was a pot. They weren't, they're not too big. They're like this size, if you've ever been there. You been? Yeah. Chir Gobi, you been there? Did you get some of the kir? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like celestial. And so he took the pot, and then it was in the evening time, so he went into the village looking for Madhavendra Puri, and he's saying, Madhavendra Puri, Madhavendra Puri, Gopinath has stolen the sweet rice for you. Come, Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri heard his name call, so he went. And Pajari, he was also a great devotee. The fact that the deity appeared to have been the dream shows how great he was. And uh, so they saw each other, and both of them, their ecstatic love for Krishna, awakened just by seeing each other, because both of them had great love for Krishna. So they started to exhibit happiness and ecstasy meeting. And then the Pujari said, here is the sweet rice. Gopinath wants you to have it. So he took it, and then he tasted it, and he ate the whole pot. Then he smashed the pot into pieces. And then he came, every day he would eat a piece of the pot because the pot was also part of the offering. It was offered on the altar from these clay pots. So he was eating that. And then people found out, oh, this person has become very popular. So what happens? People were coming around. Let, let us meet this Madhavendra Puri. So all the villagers started to come. And uh, he was getting a lot of attention. And he was thinking... This is not good. I'm getting too much attention. <laughs> because the devotee doesn't really want to attract people's attention. So he thought, you know, this is nice. So he decided to go on his way to Jagannath Puri, and he left. Finally, he made it to Jagannath Puri, and then he had to commission sandalwood. Now, sandalwood was under the care of government restrictions. You had to get permission to get sandalwood. He couldn't just get it anywhere or buy it. Only the government could authorize you to have some sandalwood. It's in some places, it's still like that today. And so he met the king of Puri. The king of Puri was very pleased with his request and gave him the papers and authorized to him for getting 80 kilograms of sandalwood and nine ounces of camphor, the best camphor. So he took that, and then the the the, uh, the king arranged for some men and a bullock cart, guards, to go along with Madhavendra Puri on his trip back to Vrindavan. And he also gave him papers where he would not have to be taxed by the the different immigration posts like that. So he went. And so when he was traveling, 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 again he came past Ramuna, where he had passed before. This story is told by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. 
what I'm narrating is being told by Mahaprabhu because he wanted to glorify Madhavendra Puri. So he's telling this story. It's mentioned in his pastime. And, uh, and then, again, he fell asleep when he was there in Jag and Puri. And again, this time, his deity Gopal appeared to him in the dream and said, My dear Madhavendra Puri, you are working so hard just to get me this nice sandalwood. But you should understand that myself and Gopinath, we are the same. So you take the sandalwood and use it on Gopinath. And if you do, I will be cool. Because <laughs> Krishna appears in different forms, but it's the same Krishna. And so he heard that instruction, so he decided to stay there. And then along with the Pajaris, he told the Pajaris, the Pajaris were so happy, they had so much, you know, rare sandalwood for their deity. So they all started to grind it up and make paste out of it, and every day they would put it all over Gopinath. And then, of course, Madhavendra Puri stayed there for a long time. And, uh, and so he worshipped Gopinath. And that Gopinath now, after that incident, that Gopinath had a new name. He was called Gopinath, now he was called Kir Kor Gopinath. Kir means sweet rice, and Kor means thief. <laughs> so the, the, the Gopinath, who is this thief that steals the sweet rice, <laughs> like that. So Krishna's a thief. You know, he's a thief. You know what he'll want? He'll steal your heart and you'll not get it back. You're going to have to capture that thief and punish him for that. If he takes your heart, that's it. You don't know what to do now. <laughs> so yeah, he's like that. He steals your heart. So yeah, and then he came back to Jagannath, and then he came back to Puri. Oh, no, he came back to Vrindavan, and he continued with the worship of Gopal, like that. And that deity is in the Nanathji deity. He's in, he's in, what is that place? Where's Nathji at? Gujarat, yeah, but what is the name of that place? Hmm? No, 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 Moon is in Orissa. Well, it's in Gujarat, it's, uh, yeah, it's the name of a place. In Gujarat, where he's being worshipped today, the deity is still there. Not Jaipur. Uh, Nathpur or something. I don't know. His name is Nathji now, of course. So that deity is very famous. And Madhavendra Puri, that was a very beautiful incident in the life of Madhavendra Puri. Where he, the, the Lord appeared to him in a dream four different times. Wow. Giving him instructions on how to serve. Isn't that amazing? So he's not a small personality. Towards the end of his life, Madhavendra Puri, he had so many powerful personalities who was disciples. Lord uh, Keshava Bharati was his disciple. Rangapuri was his disciple. Sri Advaita Acharya took initiation from Madhavendra Puri. <laughs> and there's even talk that even Lord Nityananda is a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. But some say he's a disciple, others say they, they were good friends. <laughs> because there was one, when Lord Nityananda was traveling around everywhere, he, he happened to see Madhavendra Puri and he said, Whoa, who is that personality? And Lord Nityananda started to shed tears in love of God. He was so happy. He ran over to him. He said, I've been traveling to all holy places. Now I found the best of all holy places to your lotus feet. And then they exchanged loving embrace and Madhavendra Puri embraced Lord Nityananda so long that Lord Nityananda couldn't get out <laughs> of the loving embrace of Lord Nityananda. So, and then of course, Lord Nityananda always saw Madhavendra Puri as his guru but Madhavendra Puri saw Lord Nityananda as his close friend. <laughs> so 
So yeah, this is how exalted this person, Madhavendra Puri, is. So you can hear by this verse, he's reading this verse that we were reading tonight. This is Radharani's heart. And no one knows the no one knows the meaning of this verse. Only three people know the meaning of this: Radharani, Lord Chaitanya, and Madhavendra Puri. It says, "No fourth person is capable of understanding this verse." <laughs> it looks like you can understand it, but you can't. <laughs> you might think you can understand it. But that's a, that's all you can do is think. That's it. <laughs> it's very deep in Radharani's bhakti. And so, uh, towards the end of his life, Madhavendra Puri was reciting this verse over again, and he was in ecstasy of love of God, and he would be crying and shedding tears. And then he had one disciple whose name was Ramachandra Puri. Now, Ramachandra Puri was not so uh, advanced. So when he saw his spiritual master, Madhavendra Puri, going into these ecstasies, he was thinking, he started to instruct him, and he said, Guru Maharaj, you know, be peaceful. <laughs> Just meditate on the Brahman effulgence and be peaceful. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Madhavendra Puri got so angry. He said, get out of here. If I see your face well, before I die, then I'll take a low birth in some place. <laughs> Get out of here. I don't ever want to see you again. <laughs> he threw him out. Yeah. He was instructing his ma of spiritual master who was in ecstasy of love of God and separation, telling him to meditate on Brahman. Oh. <laughs> and then he left, and all his material desires returned. And then he became a critic of the devotees, and he became a critic of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He found fault with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's eating, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would always accept the offerings of his devotees when they cooked it. So when Ramachandra Puri, he saw, he said, oh, you, you're a sannyasi and you eat so much. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya took, because Ramachandra Puri was the godbrother of his spiritual master, Ishwar Puri, so he was thinking, well, you know, the godbrother of my spiritual master should be respected on the same level as my spiritual master. That is the etiquette. And so uh, the Lord accepted his criticism, and he cut his eating in half. And then Ramachandra Puri said, he went to his house and he saw, look at this. All ants all over the floor. This sannyasi, he secretly gets up in the middle of the night and eats sweets. And that's why there's all these ants everywhere. <clears throat> yeah, I know for sure. And Prabhupada tells the story, he says, in India there's ants everywhere. <laughs> So, but Lord Chaitanya didn't say anything, but the devotees were really upset. Because Madhavapandri Puri, sometimes he would come when the devotees were about to take prasadam, and he would take the serving bucket and he would serve the, the, the devotees. So he would, you can write this down. <laughs> he, was, uh, he would say, here, take more, take more, take more. This is prasadam, it's nice, eat more. And then the devotees, just to make him happy, they would eat more. And then he would, then he would say, just see, it's true. The devotees of Lord Chaitanya, they eat so much. <laughs> so he would force them to eat. And then he would criticize them for eating too much. <laughs> so the devotees weren't happy. And they didn't know what to do. So I guess they were praying to Krishna. And finally Krishna arranged for him to leave and he'd never come back. And the devotees were happy again. Not because they were being criticized, but because Lord Chaitanya, they couldn't offer, you know, what they were offering to Lord Chaitanya. They couldn't serve him nicely. And Lord Chaitanya wasn't going to eat because he got criticized. So now the devotees were happy again. Now there was another disciple of Madhavendra Puri called Ishwar Puri. Now, Madhavandra Puri, in his old age, he was like an invalid. He could not take care of his personal needs. So Ishwar Puri would 
very carefully clean up after his spiritual master and take care and do everything needed to serve his spiritual master very nicely. And um, Bhadavendra Puri was so grateful for that that he blessed him with the, his complete blessings and that Ishwar Puri became the spiritual master of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by the blessings of the spiritual master. One who receives the blessings of the spiritual master, then the path of devotional service is wide open. Uh, in Kali Yuga, we don't really understand this principle, but the spiritual master is the full representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore by carefully, sincerely, and enthusiastically following those instructions, then one, it's, it's very easy to go back home, back to Godhead. There's no problem. That's the key to devotional. Sometimes you say, well, where's that key? There it is, right there. F learn those instructions. If you get personal instructions from your spiritual master specifically, consider yourself very fortunate. In our ISKCON society, many devotees got personal instructions from Prabhupada. Many didn't get instructions from Prabhupada. But in, in the case that those didn't, they would have to follow the general instructions that Prabhupada made available to everyone through his books and through his lectures, like that. So that is the key to Krishna consciousness. If you have any doubt in your spiritual master, that will block your advancement in Krishna. And it may also cause you to fall down in spiritual life. So therefore, Prabhupada said, don't take a spiritual master unless you are 100% ready to follow completely. And therefore, he said, you should test your spiritual master for at least one year to make sure that this is the person you want to give your life to. And then when you are sure, and the spiritual master is also supposed to test his aspiring disciple to see if he's qualified, and then that is called mutual examination. And after one year, or more in some cases, when everything is understood, then one can take initiation. But if there's the slightest doubt, that doubt should be cleared before one moves into that area. Because once you take initiation, and if you don't follow your spiritual master, then you don't make any advancement. So, because the spiritual master is the transparent via media to Krishna, like that. So one has to very, be very enthusiastic to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. So, it's not like going shopping for a new pair of shoes <laughs> or, a, a, you know, a pair of Wrangler jeans or something like that. It's about, you know, the, your whole life. You should very carefully seek out the association and shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and for at least one year hear from that person and very much understand whether this person is the person you want to surrender your life to. And if you become an obedient disciple, following everything carefully and also using your intelligence how to serve more and more, then uh, you'll, you're fixed in devotional service. Because only by the Kripa Shakti can we be successful. Jnana Shakti is not enough. You need Kripa Shakti. You need both. The Kripa Shakti comes from the spiritual master. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the process like that. So Madhavendra Puri showed the world through these two disciples that one who criticizes, offends, or gets the <clears throat> a dis what's the word? They they uh, cause the spiritual master to, to reject them, then their life is lost in spiritual life 
and one who follows very carefully, like Ishwar Puri, and then there's no limit to how much mercy one can receive on the way back home, back to Godhead. This is very important. And if you want the full blessings of your spiritual master, then do, as Prabhupada said, do what I am doing. Now, when we heard that, Prabhupada said to do this, do what I am doing. How can we do what you do? That is impossible. Impossible. Impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. <laughs> But what Prabhupada was saying is, I am preaching, you preach too. So there is the extra mercy, the extra kripa, preach Krishna consciousness. And you will always be in the best position. Okay, so this is the life of Madhavendra Puri. Ayidina Dayadradnata He Maturanata Kadava Lokyase Ridayam Taraloka Kataram Dayata Brahmyati Kim Karomiaham O my Lord, O most merciful Master, O Master Matura, when shall I see you again? Because of my not seeing you, my agitated heart has become unsteady. O oh, most beloved one, what shall I do now? Radharani's bhakti, glorified by Madhavendra Puri. And he was the one who introduced Radharani into the Sampradaya. <laughs> okay, so this is a little bit about the life of Sri Madhavendra Puri. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took shelter of Madhavendra Puri's disciple Ishwar Puri and he did that because Madhavendra Puri was in the line of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> okay. Hey, don't walk so loud. Be quiet. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, Rishab G. We'll ask a question, and I will try to give an answer. Yeah, I have two questions and two one Two questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, in my vague memory, I can recall that I read somewhere that prior to Madhavendra Puri, Vaishnavas would worship Krishna without Srimati Radharani. And yeah. he was the one who established worshiping Srimati Radharani alongside with Krishna. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So why did they worship uh, Krishna without Srimati Radharani? <laughs> mm. Because Radha Bhakti wasn't known so much at that time. Um, it's only when Lord Chaitanya appeared that he introduced that mood of Radha Bhakti. But it came from Madhavendra Puri. Yeah, that's true. Uh, why? The question is why? Hmm. I think there was not enough understanding of Radharani's position up until Madhavendri Puri revealed all that. And he revealed who Radharani was and what is her position in relationship to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Because another name for Radharani is Sarva Lakshmi Mai. She's the source of all the Lakshmis. So sometimes she was seen as a, you know, one of the many Lakshmis or gopis. But, but she's not just one of the gopis. She's the best of all the gopis. Mm -hmm. Her position is hard, is impossible. There's two things you'll never understand in Krishna consciousness, no matter who you are, what you are, 
even even if you're the greatest spiritual scholar in the world, two things you will never understand. Radharani's bhakti and Krishna's qualities. These two things you can never understand. What are the qualities of Krishna and what is Radharani's love for Krishna? It's, these two things are not measurable by anybody. So that's one of the re one. The Radharani remained a mystery until it was revealed by Madhavendra Puri. Thank you. And the second question is that you mentioned that uh, one of the disciples of Madhavendra Puri was Keshava Bharati. Was that right? Yeah, he was, who became the spiritual Sanyas, master, the sannyas guru. Of, yeah, but he was Ekadandi. He was a monistic philosopher, wasn't that's he? That's what it says. I have it written in. Uh, and one, I was reading it today in one book. It says he, they had a whole listing of all his disciples. The word Keshava Bharati was there. Now, I don't know if it's the same Keshava Bharati. Maybe it's a different one. Could be. And um, finally, I have a comment. I read in Back to, in Back to Godhead magazine that... Um, Kirchur Gopinath was made by, carved by uh, uh, Ramachandra himself yeah. oh, with, yeah. uh, with the, with Arrow. the arrowhead, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, um, actually I found the book. When I went to Ramuna Temple, I was there, I found this little book that was put out by the temple and I bought it and then I started reading it and that pastime was in there. And it says that uh, he had a, it's a shila, it was a black stone, and he started carving it. And then he carved, and then Sita Devi came over and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm carving the form of my next incarnation. <laughs> and then he showed her, and she was amazed to see it. So that carving, because uh, Gopinath is part of a shila, it's a big black stone, and he's carved into the stone like that. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you for bringing it up. Not too many people know that. I didn't find it anywhere in our literature. I found it in that little book when I was in Ramuna. <laughs> Yeah, because Lord, Ch well, Ramachandra appeared two million years ago. Two million, yeah, that's the actual time period. But when the worship began, we don't really know. That that's another thing. But the carving was done by Ramachandra himself with an arrow. Yeah. Yes. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the interesting le lecture. Um, when you were talking about how one should not uh, accept a guru uh, if he has even the slightest doubt about him, uh, it got me wondering uh, what can somebody or what can a devotee do if he's, he is in a position where he wants to accept a spiritual master uh, but uh, has, uh, has seeked um, one for many years and perhaps even because of his own lackings, uh, he, he, he cannot find someone which he would perceive as faultless. Hmm. Well, if there's any doubt, you just ask questions. Get your questions. If there's whatever doubt you have, present it either to the spiritual master or someone who is very close to the spiritual master. Because that doubt can grow into something very big which can cause one to, you know, fall down. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that's why, that's why that mutual testing period of one year is there to clear all the doubts. That's what it's about. Yeah. So we have to ask questions. Just like, you know, sometimes people take the shelter of a particular spiritual master and then they want another spiritual master. So they're thinking, well, I already committed myself to this spiritual master. Maybe I should stay with them. But then they're more inclined to the other spiritual master. So they think, well, since I'm already with this spiritual master, I should take that one. But then again, that's, that's not really 
that their commitment won't be complete. I was just listening to Prabhupada today. It's amazing. He was just he was giving a pre-initiation lecture. Oh, was that heavy? <laughs> Whoa! He was saying, "Don't take a spiritual master if you're not willing to follow. Don't make a farce out of this. This is you know this is very serious." And then he explained how, how to get rid of all your doubts. But how come then uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, when I was reading the Lilamrita, in the early years he accepted a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, students, uh, even though some yeah. weren't serious. So why? Yeah, but don't try to imitate Prabhupada, <laughs> because what Prabhupada was doing is, Prabhupada knew Prabhupada had three heart attacks. The third one was in 1967, just after he began his movement. He knew that he didn't have much time. He was trying to build his movement fast, and he took some he took some risks. And just like giving sannyas to a lot of people who weren't qualified for sannyas, he gave because he needed preachers. So he he said, "Well, you're not up to the standard, but if you stay very strict in following the four regulative principles and chanting your rounds, then you can stay fixed." So Prabhupada took a chance, and there's no question about it, but now we don't need to worry about that anymore. That, that threat is, so Prabhupada knew if he left, the movement would be nothing. So Prabhupada prayed, my dear Lord, I just began my movement, I'm not, you know, please give me more time. And then he told me, he said, Krishna gave me 10 more years. And during that time, he really built his movement up. But he did take a chance, accepting disciples and giving sannyas. He did. He did take a little risk. Okay, thank you for explaining, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a strange uh, situation about uh, instruction I got from Guru, so I don't know how to understand. So, like, uh, I was reading Guru Tattva from Gorgovinda Swami, and mm -hmm. I was so much inspired because he was explaining that getting instruction from Guru is life and soul for someone, so it's topmost you can get, get. And then I was so much inspired and said, Guru Maharaj, please. Give me something, whatever. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then you said, then after a while you wanted to redraw, redraw your request, huh? <laughs> then, no, no, it was, it is, it is, um, uh, chorus. Like, and then I said, okay, I will think about, I really want it. And I was willing, and I, I was not attached. So I said, like, if not now time, when is the time? And he said, okay, I will think it. And then after a couple of days, he said, I got an idea. And there was one project, uh, one of his disciples is running. He said, maybe you can connect with him. And he actually connected two of us. And then we met a couple of times and we really uh, get along nicely, energy flows. But uh, there was no next steps into the project. And I cannot do nothing because he's running. So I don't have a clue, an idea what to do. Really? Because you, tr you tried. Huh? You tried. By myself. Hmm? Uh, we started, we were, we were um, communicated, we had about a couple, two me meetings, and I was waiting from his input, inputs, so, because I, I'm, this field is completely new for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you tried your best. No, I guess the thing was to... to refer back to the spiritual master and say, this is the problem. <laughs> yes, and I did that, and then he said, okay, maybe you can uh, contact him from time to time and then see, and even then, nothing happened, and then finally, finally, uh, Guru Maharaj started to work uh, more, 
helping him in that part. He said, oh, now you, <laughs> now you can help me, <laughs> not him anymore. And then I was waiting. And, and uh, in, the, in between, I started uh, distributing books more and more. And I said, Guru Maharaj, now in between, I'm doing that. And he, he seems happy. So mm -hmm. that's... <laughs> Success. So how can I got instruction, but this instruction at the moment yeah, looks but like... It, the point is, it led to something better. <laughs> yeah, for me, I'm missing. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> you can't see sometimes where it's going to go. <laughs> but it went to, it went to a point where actually, you were able to get into a service that you can really get into. So success. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you can. Yeah. It was good. Everything worked out perfectly. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, CC Panchatattva ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Madhavendra Puri ki jai, Gaur Pimanande, Srila Prabhupada ki jai.